Hello and welcome to this, today's show. Now, this is the first episode of the new series on the channel where I go through some of the vehicles in GTA and show you why I think they're best or why I like them or ones that I personally pick for certain things along with some possible races, some challenges and obviously tests and reviews on cars. So to start off we have, um, it's a car that I tend to use quite a lot in races especially in the supercar class. So we just have a look around this floor is quite dirty, I need to get it clean to be honest, there's a lot of mess around here. Um, yeah, the car that we are going to be talking about today is the Devastate 8. Now, uh, this, at the time of this episode airing, um, is currently the most, in my opinion, it's the fastest supercar for races, especially in public stunt races. Why do I say that? Because I personally myself have probably won about 97% of races that I do in the supercar class. Hence why I think this is the best. Um, now, I normally go with, when it comes to cars, I, have, I used to have two choices. Um, but we'll get onto that in a minute. We'll take it out for a little drive. Um, this, I'm going to go through the appearance because this card looks completely unbelievable. It's not like any other normal car. And we'll get to the main reason for that in a sec. Um, but the GTA series doesn't actually have a hypercar class which is higher up than supercar and I believe this would probably be in the hypercar class by no doubt just because of its appearance and the speed. One, the appearance is just bonkers and hypercars are meant to be just downright nuts and two, the speed is pretty much nearly unmatchable. Um, the fronts... I don't know, it's it's weird. It's not. It's streamlined, but it's not streamlined. If that makes sense. Um, then you got the side. You have multiple spoilers that you can adapt to this thing. Um, you got a little bit there. That little bit in the middle. That you can change color to secondary or carbon. Um, and the inside. To be honest, hypercar wise, is very basic. It's it's very basic. You got the steering wheel, you got the pedals. You haven't got anything crazy in there. You ain't got a load of buttons on the steering wheel like Ferrari do. Um, but the main purpose why this car is a hypercar class in my books is the rear end. Now, if this thing was in all black, it would look like the Batmobile. It would look like a sporty version of the Batmobile, to be honest. Um, the one downside. Uh, the spoil the uh, exhausts, which I don't know if you can see. I actually do have exhausts in there, but these massive holes—they're just holes. They're—they're they're not actually the exhaust. If that was the exhaust, and the little spit of flame came out when you used the turbo, or if the turbo kicked in with the little spit of flame and it came out of that, they would be massive. That would surely give it some kind of boost. But no, the exhausts are the tiny little things in the very, very middle. And you can't really see them, so there's not really much point in customising them. And obviously you get a little brake light down in the bottom. Um, but, the speed wise, is, if this was real life, going to um, race car speeds. Which means this is basically a road legal racer, which is very, it's very unique having that. So, uh, the handling, tell you what, let's take this out for a spin and we'll get onto the handling now, shall we? And it has going doors, so if you flip upside down, you are screwed, I'm afraid. 
Um, but this is the inside. Like I said, very basic. No rear seat, obviously. Um, but you have got racing doors. So you have to close them with the little thread thing. But let's take this out for a spin, shall we? Right, okay, so... Obviously, in first light, it is very... Uh, it is very impressive. Obviously, because everything is very sleek, it's very low to the ground. As you can tell by there, it practically inches off the ground. Um, but, we're going to take this through a little test drive to our test track. And then we're going to go take a. We're going to take two versions around our test track. And let me just say, the speed is very. It it kicks off very quick. Um, we're going to take two vehicles around our test track today. We have got this car and a a stock version of this car and a fully upgraded version of this car. So we're going to be taking them both around the track, um, but we're going to go... we're going to go to the test track first, if these guys let me in this time, because they didn't let me in earlier. No, nope, I'm going to... no, right, I'm going to have to go do the door myself. <sighs> Security guards are useless. There's a button here somewhere. Where is it? Hey, there it is. Right. Get that. There we go. Right, let's, uh, let's take this out. Don't know why they don't seem to open the door to me anymore. It's really confusing. Right. So, we're going to save the speed. Just until we get onto the track. And we're going to start off all the way down the end. All the way down here. Now. Like I said, this starts off very quick, especially if you do the fast um, lift-off speed. So, basically, what you want to do is you want to have your you want to have the handbrake on and have the acceleration just before you hit the flame. If you hit, if you see the flame like that, you've gone too far. Start again. We want to get about 50%. And then... Right, that wasn't very good. Hold on, let me try that again. There is... You can do it. Right, I don't think this car can do it. But, that acceleration straight all the way to speed. Look at that practically completed the entire runway in a matter of seconds. The grip is very impressive. There's a lot of it. Obviously if you do it properly you can get around corners like this very easily if you know how to do it properly. Um, basically not holding that accelerator down constantly because if you do you will spin out and you will embarrass yourself in front of all your friends and all the women that you're probably trying to impress. Like that. Bang on, straight, no sliding whatsoever. Um, but if you don't do it properly, then uh, this is what happens. You ready? You don't do it properly, this is what happens. You go off, banging on the grass, and you've messed up your paintwork that you've probably spent thousands on. So, you want a leg of that accelerator. Don't go too hard on it. And basically, not use the accelerator all of the time. Because if you use the accelerator all of the time, you're going to slip. Um, Drifting-wise, it's not really a drifter. I'm sure you probably could if you knew how to. Let me just give it a go. Yeah, see, it's 
it kind of does it, but it's more of a power slide. It's just got too much grip to be able to do it. Um, but back onto the reason why I think this is best. Um, mainly because, like I said, I win about 97% of races that I do. Why 97 you may ask is because the other 3% is when I'm getting crashed into by the players. Um, if this thing has a race where non-contact is on and you've got custom vehicles, you are going to win if you've got this thing. So, don't, and it doesn't come in a stock version on the list of cars you can select, so don't think you're going to get it when using um, non-custom vehicles selected. Um, so, yeah. Don't try and be a smartass, because it won't work. Now, back on to uh, why I normally, why I said that I normally have two, um, normally two cars in the, in the option, in the uh, classes I select. Mainly because, I mean, it's more of the supercar classes. It doesn't really happen much in sports classes. Um, but acceleration and handling. Two very important things when it comes to racing. Um, what I used to do was if I had a uh, one lap race, I would use um, no, a point to point race. If I was to use a point to point race, I would use at the time it was the X80 Proto, which had slightly slippery handling, but was very quick in the acceleration, um, especially when non-contact was on. Um, and then the the handling, I would have used the T20. Uh, but obviously those two cars are now practically obsolete now that these have turned up. You can still get them, they're still pretty cool cars. They're nice to drive around and they're comfortable. Uh, but if you are serious about racing and want to win, you need to get this car. You're not going to win many races if you don't have this car. Um, but that is my opinion, so don't hold me to it. If you if you have a car that you love and you win races with, fair enough, then that's your opinion. But to me, this for me is the best car I can get. Um, but you're probably wondering, okay, but what about the other car? You said you had two. One for acceleration, one for handling. Yeah, this does the best of both. This has great handling, has great acceleration. The steering, there's no understeer, there's no oversteer, the brakes are good, so everything is awesome about it. Um, and in a minute, we are going to have a check on the laps of um, the stock version of this car and the um, fully upgraded version of this car but first of all I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to do some magic work with the uh, with the camera just so you can get a decent look at uh, at this mainly because it is such an awesome car and quite frankly in this light oh my god. Wait, let me try and get that camera angle again. I literally just had it. Hang on, can we get the sunlight in that? No, we can't. Look at this view. Look at, not, whatever. Look at it. That is unbelievable. It is honestly an amazing piece of machinery and Rockstar really did a great job with it. Um, so, 
very well done for making this car. And uh, let's check out the lap times for the stock version and the upgraded version, shall we? So I will see you in a minute with that one. So, as you can see there, very much, it was, I wouldn't say it was close, but, you know, upgraded cars tend to be quicker. Now, the editing may have, may have made it seem like they were probably close, um, but timer, nah, sorry. The modified, customized version is better nearly practically every single time with any car you use. You're gonna get the customized version much better than the stock version. So, and like I said, don't try and be a smart ass or be clever. So. But that's going to be the end of this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, I will be doing more of these. I'm going to be doing the sports car that I most favour when doing races in the next episode. Um, but just before we end off, this car could be witnessing some competition. Now, I'm not talking about the uh, Pariah because that just destroys any sports car, any supercar even. Um, I'm on about another supercar which is coming next week. I think it's next week. A cr the Kragen? 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 Krag? I don't know. I know it's got a K in it and a G in it. Um, but that, to me, has the potential for... Um, with some potential to be faster than this. So, Devastate will have some competition soon. Um, but, hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment any cars you would like me to have a talk about or review on. Um, or wife is just to say hi. And obviously, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell if you want to keep up to date on any GTA vehicles tests, challenges, races and whatever may come in this series and I hope you guys all enjoyed it and I will very what the wow that was great driving that these are the drivers that drive around this city and people say we drive horribly okay um yeah anyway hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you on the next time that we review a car and it is going to be the Pariah in the sports class and why I think it is best. Thank you and good.